Hello, I'm Bill Harris of Life Questions. Welcome to our program, which is designed to focus on your questions about life from a biblical perspective. The answer to many of life's questions are clearly written in the Bible. In many cases, they are written in plain sight. In other cases, they are hidden in plain sight for us to dig out, so to speak. But well, today we've invited four local ministers equipped with shovels, so to speak, mm -hmm. to help us dig out the answers to the questions that many of you viewers have sent us. In a little bit, we will be telling you how to contact us with your questions. But right now, let's meet the members of our clergy panel. First up, Pastor Ray Hadley of Ada Family Center in Ada, Ohio. Next, Pastor Jerry Meyer of the Breakthrough Harvest in Ottawa, Ohio followed by Pastor Mark Bailiff of the Union Chapel Missionary Church here in Lima. And rounding off our panel is Pastor Matt Steiner of the Pandora Missionary Church, of course, in Pandora, Ohio. Gentlemen, we're happy to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you with us. And let's, let's start our discussion, I think, by talking about a topic that we are all plagued with to one extent or another, and that is the topic of worry. Because the Bible tells us not to worry but to put our trust in the Lord. And, and this is very simple, very basic. Perhaps, pastors, it's easier said than done. Um, and let's, let's lead off, uh, first of all, by talking about worry, uh, by having you, Pastor uh, Bailiff, to, to give us your take on worry, what brings it about, how do we yeah. manage it, handle it, all those kinds of things. Uh, Bill, probably our biggest challenge is to think as Jesus taught. And so when we read, for instance, in Matthew 6, he said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap, uh, but their father takes care of them. And are they not more valuable than you? And then it says, Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Or another translation says, make yourself an inch taller. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think one of the things Jesus is telling us is the futility of, of worry. Now, that being said, you're right. Worrying is easy to do, and there's plenty of things we could worry about. Mm -hmm. But I think it's helpful for our viewers to know that, that the, the word worry uh, literally means to choke or to twist. It does? And, I didn't know about that. And, and that's either. one of the reasons why Jesus tells us not to do that because it literally chokes and twists life out of us. And we've all heard people say, well, I'm a worrier. I was born a worrier, I'll always be a worrier. And, and really that's, that's paganistic thinking. Uh, and I'm not saying I never worry. This is not the high and mighty talking here. But most of us can quote 633, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness alone. And then all these things will be added. We're good at quoting that. Mm -hmm. But the other part is you can't add anything to anything by worrying. And matter of fact, at the end, uh, Jesus said, therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have enough of its own junk. <laughs> and that's basically what he's saying, right, uh -huh. to put it in our own context. Uh -huh. And so there's two things that emerge out of that for me. And I encourage people in my church. I try to encourage my own heart on these things. But one is that Jesus tells us not to worry. And if he tells us not to, not only are we not supposed to do that, but he'll help us to not worry. Yeah. So it's not a suggestion. Is what it's you're not saying. just it's, a suggestion. It's a command he's given it's us. It's a command for our own good. Yeah. And it's almost like a stop sign or, hey, don't run those yellow lights. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. But the other part is that take it to the other degree, Bill. And let's say that how much worry does it take in order to make something happen or keep something from happening? Well, there's no measure of that. That's yeah. why Jesus told us not to do it. Yeah. You, you look like you're chomping at the bit to get in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just thinking that in a practical sense, um, um, you know, we know the truth and we have the scripture, That's um, right. but sometimes yeah. it takes uh, a practice or, a, you know, what I would do is I would post post-it notes with God's promises That's on a, on a refrigerator so or essential. carry it around and then yep. it's okay. You know, we're not supposed to worry. We're commanded not to, but we can condemn ourselves for, for worrying too. So I, I think that let's be honest with God. Okay, I'm stressed about this, but I'm going to turn that 
you know, um, Psalm 121 says, where does my help come from? Mm -hmm. yeah, and he's asking Lord. that question, like, what's going to happen? And then the very next verse says, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Yes. So yes. you have that question, but then you have that, you turn that to the peace of God, which is his word. So what I do is I'll post it or my wife will remind me of verses of truth. Mm -hmm. And then I'll like, okay, I'm back where I should be. Yeah. <laughs> that's and that's, that's thinking as Jesus taught. Mm -hmm. Which, right. I mean, behaviors are somewhat easy to change, but thinking is what Jesus is talking about here. Yeah. At right. least in part. Great. Also, yeah. too, the, well, and the question is, you know, what does the Bible, we know what the Bible says. Right. But I love how they said another thing to feel it. Right. And what does that mean? You know, when the Bible says, don't worry about anything, pray about everything. Right. Mm -hmm. But I also look at the words of Jesus when he said in Matthew 11, anyone that is um, heavy burdened. Yes or if you're tired or yes. you're weary, come to me and I will give you rest. That's right. I think the key word in that verse is give. Yeah. He gives rest, are we receiving it? Right. Are we accepting right. that rest? And I, I think that kind of puts the feeling to scripture is to feel that rest. And it goes on to say his yoke is easy, to his right. burden is light. And so I think when people understand to feel the rest that Jesus gives and to receive it. I think that's key is to receive the gift mm -hmm. of rest that Jesus gives. It seems to me that some part of the pastor deals with uh, the thought process. It's a matter of what to think. Jesus is not telling us not to think, right. Right. but it's right. what we're thinking about. Is that, am I right, right. there? Well, and, and the other, the other if, if you look at it this way, um, is, is worry the normal response to what we do, what we go through, if, if we're dealing with a situation, I mean, at first we do, oh my goodness, what just happened? But allowing that to abide and gain a foothold over us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it undermines the power of our faith. We, it, right. it causes us to take our focus off of the Word of God, off of the promises right. of God, and, and, the, and then we, we, we truly lose focus in the midst of the situation. Right. We, we no longer want to apply the, the promises of the Word because we're right. stuck in, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, this doesn't change, or this, this won't, right. how, how will this change? Right. Um, we focus on our inabilities or our insecurities, right. the things that we don't have. But I always loved it when, when um, Elisha spoke to the widow woman um, who her sons were about to be taken and she said I don't I don't have anything mm. he didn't ask her what she didn't have because she already told him that he asked her what do you have mm. right and That's and good. so if you're in the middle of worry and you're in the middle of that and it's overwhelming you and it's 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 beating you down that's when we have to stop looking at what we don't have and get in the scripture. Find out what you do have. That's good. Find the promise of God in your in, in, in whatever area you may be facing and stand on that trust right. in the Lord. Right. Um, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust, Psalm 71. Let me never be put to confusion. If I have that foundation in the word of God, that will keep me from that confusion, which leads right. to worry and doubt. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. One small interjection here, Bill. I think a lot of our viewing audience would say from time to time, we all worry. Absolutely. Sure, some. sure. Um, yeah. But I think maybe what we do more than worry is we're concerned about things. Mm -hmm. mm. And there's a big difference between being concerned. How's and, it, what is that distinction? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, and then looking at the choking, twisting aspect yeah. of what Jesus is talking about. And so I, I think a lot of people would say, well, I'm concerned about things. Does that mean I'm not doing what Jesus said? And those are two very different things. It's when it starts to stifle our lives mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and we begin to not seek the kingdom things first. And the other aspect, which everybody knows, and people who are worriers know this, that the vast majority of things we worry about never happen. Isn't that the case? <laughs> we know so that. Sure. The case. Yeah. We know that. That's why Jesus said not to do it. Yeah. Right. At least in part. Time, At least in part. That's a waste of time. That's good. Anybody else? Any final comments before we uh, turn to a break? All right. Well, then we're going to listen. We're going to come back in a few moments and we'd certainly like you in the audience to stick around because I, another topic I think we need to approach, one that has been written to us about. The Bible tells us to honor our parents. How do you do that when you've got a parent that has been abusive to you during your life? Or yes. you have a parent who has stolen from you, taken from you? Nonetheless, the Bible tells us to honor our parents. We want to deal with that when we come back, and we'll be right back in a moment. Stay with us.
don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. Welcome back to Live Questions. We're happy to have you with us. Let's change the subject a bit now, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. We are told quite often that we uh, should honor our parents. This is what the Lord has told us. I am grateful for the fact that when Jesus was on the cross, he did make that cry, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus yeah. understands mm -hmm. a person whose parent didn't come through from them, for That's them. That's good. That is good. And you know, that is the case, isn't it, today? Mm -hmm. More often than not, yes. sometimes parents don't come through for that child, mm -hmm. but we're still asked to honor that child. How do we do that, Pastor? Well, I, I, I um, like to look at the uh, both times that Moses <coughs> discussed honoring your father and your mother, uh, both Exodus 20 and uh, verse 12 and Deuteronomy 5 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. um, the Hebrew word there he used was uh, kabod, which is translated to honor, to give honor, to give glory, or to recognize the nobility of. Um, however, uh, that same word, the same word has another definition, and it, it can be to be heavy, or literally mm -hmm. in, the, in the bad sense, to be burdensome or mm. difficult. Um, in situations like the ones being described here, I, I know I, I, in... in uh, um, my early days of ministry as a pastor, I worked in a bank, in a bank office, and um, uh, I had a young lady come in, and, and uh, she was just crying, and her, her mother had written checks out on her account, signed the young lady's name, and um, had basically stolen thousands of dollars of um, tuition money that had come in wow. for her college, wow. and she didn't know what she was going to do. and. You know, how do, how do you do, how do, as, you do as the banker, you know, you, you know that there's certain things that you have to ask, certain questions you have to ask. But as the pastor, I'm like wanting to get up out of my chair, go over and pray for her and, yes. and just, you know, let her know that God's God, God is able yeah. to, to, to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or even think. Well, you must uh, have had a tough time yourself dealing with that. I mean, as a banker, you've got you've got certain protocol. Right. You have to follow. Right. But and then as a minister, right. you've yeah. got certain protocol. You've sure. Got to follow. Absolutely. Yeah. And, what and, on and earth one, did you do? And, and, and you know, uh, being on the job, you have to um, fall within the requirements of the job. But I also made sure that there was a time that I did go after her and pray with her and mm -hmm. talk to her a little bit along my other profession. How mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and, and thank God nowadays I only have the one and I don't have the other. But yeah. uh, you have uh, the ministry. Yes. Anyways. Amen. Yeah, good. Um, but but, you know, when it comes down to it, um, the commandment sometimes can seem heavy. It can seem hard. Yeah. Um, yet when Jesus in Matthew 15 talked about the same thing, honor your father and your mother. The, the, the Greek word that he used there, tomeo, which it means to honor, to prize, but then it says this, to esteem the value of, yes. or to uh, place value upon. That's good. And so even, now we're not saying lie about your parents to your kids or anything like that. I sure. mean, they, they're, trust me, kids see stuff. Sure, they, they, sure. they know stuff. They recognize stuff sometimes that you don't believe they can recognize at the age they're at. Mm -hmm. uh, but our <clears throat> job as, as a Christian, our job as a child of God mm -hmm. is to forgive. Yeah. And that's hard sometimes. It's one of the hardest things God asks us to do because it's more uh, uh, like Him than like us. Mm -hmm. um, and yet He He lays the foundation of that um, right here. We're not at... We, to honor your parents doesn't mean to cover up their misdeeds or act like nothing happened, but it does mean that I place a value, even on the bad things that I received right. or on the bad lessons that I may have learned. Right. I don't, I can't, I can't get away from the value. I learned something. Um, we shared a story back in the back also about my father who, um, um, you know, my grandfather, uh, when my father was young, um, was an alcoholic. 
and um, there were times that he got sent into the bar to get some money for groceries or else he'd drink it away. Hmm. And, um, you know, as a young man, my father, who wasn't saved at the time, just made a determination that his children would never live through that, never right. go through anything right. like that. And, you know, praise God, my grandfather gave his heart to the Lord and, and um, got set free from alcoholism. Mm -hmm. um, but the story of, even though he wasn't a, a Christian, he had to learn from that that was done to him. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, decide never to do that again. Right. Never to have that, to break that cycle in his generation right. so That's that so we would never know it. Yep. Yeah. Any of you yeah. gentlemen have any similar experience with the parishioners and the like? Well, I, just what comes to mind, again, the Exodus 20, uh, verse 12, is you know, honor. That is, is what God is telling us to do, to honor your parents. And I just want to, to the listeners out there that have been um, with abusive parents or in a situation of being stolen from or whatever the case may be, first, our heart goes out to you. And, yes, you know, absolutely. we empathize with and uh, have compassion for that. And, you know, one thing we have to understand, God commands this, but God's a big God, and we can be raw and honest with Him. You know, forgiving, like you, it's been mentioned, is hard. And I just think of when Jesus, you know, his, his Father, you know, turned His back as Jesus was dying on the cross, but also Jesus said, forgive them, talking to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. And just that forgiveness is so right. powerful. And it does break the chain from an abusive past or something that you've had to deal with. And so I think just encouragement that just bring your struggle to God and, right. and be raw. And, and if you're having a hard time forgiving, if you're having a hard time looking at your father, your mother through the lens of Christ, pray for that. That's pray nice. for him to come and just have the spirit just come and just give you that strength because in our strength, we can't do it. And I'm reminded right. of a verse in Romans 8, where it says, you know, remember God causes everything to work together for his good, for, his good. That's right. for those who love him. When you talk about in the raw, dealing with these things in the raw, I, I'm reminded of uh, the story of Joyce Meyer. I've heard her talk about uh, the abuse, the sexual abuse of her father yeah. on her. And my, my daughter, Erica, who's visiting the <laughs> studio with us today, worked in the Joyce Meyer ministry yeah. and has heard this story. How, and, and Joyce Meyer has said how she came to love her dad right. uh, despite what he did to her yes. uh, before he, he left this world. How do you counsel a young girl, for instance, who may be watching this program, who has been abused by her dad? How are you going to talk to that young girl about loving her dad nonetheless? Yeah. How do you do that? Hmm. Anybody want to approach well, Andrew? It, it, it comes down to what sounds simple, Bill, and that's forgiveness. And we know that, that the, the biblical principle of forgiveness is liberating. I mean, just like yeah. worrying, don't worry, uh, but forgive. Mm -hmm. And when we forgive, we're able to let go and, and be set free. And I would never say that I understand what Joyce Meyer went through. Mm -hmm. I, I can't identify with that, but I have seen countless times, as we all have, when people were in very difficult circumstances and they did forgive that other person. Sometimes they forgive them even after that person has died. Yeah. Or yeah. they're in a faraway place, they can't actually do it face to face. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when they, they let that be canceled, there's something miraculous and grace oriented where they, yes. are, they begin to be set free. Yeah. Uh, there's one other little aspect about this back to the, 12th chap uh, the 20th chapter in, in Exodus. And that is, uh, there's this conditional aspect that says, and if you honor your mother and father, that it will be well with you in the land and you'll live yes. in the land a long time. Right. I personally see young people, for whatever reason, who do not respect and honor their parents. Mm -hmm. God takes that very seriously, sure. whether yeah. they have great yeah. parents or not so great. Mm -hmm. I just thought one more, just real short. Um, I believe that when we show honor and respect to our parents and they don't deserve it, that that is in a sense, um, well, we are showing God's love to them first, but we're yes. also opening an opportunity for them That's good. to come to Christ mm -hmm. through right. our love and our right. yeah. um, absolutely you know, un mm -hmm. unconditional love for them. Yep. Showing that respect, I think it's going to say something to the parent, even if they're not seeing it right off the bat. That's really good. Very good. Yeah. And I, well, the, the, the other, another thing too to think about is if, if you hold 
um, any kind of unforgiveness or bitterness. And, and this is where it affects you. It does. It creates an endless loop in other relationships for yeah. you, if, especially if you're talking about someone who was abused or, or things like that, uh, physically, sexually, those kind of things. Uh, it creates a loop and it, it begins to pollute your, your other relationships in your life. It can even pollute the relationship that you have with God because yeah, it robs an image of who God is as your father right. from you. Yeah. That, uh, you know, your father is supposed to be the one who's supposed to uh, provide the peace and the security and provision in your life. And when that's taken away, it robs you of an image of who God is in your life mm -hmm. as a father. Mm -hmm. He's not an absentee father or a deadbeat dad. He's a provider. He's, yes. a, he's, he's one of love and, and, and encouragement and strength and power. And, and, and when you know him like that, it has the ability to change all of your other relationships for the better. Yeah. I was just going to, you know, kind of piggyback off that. You know, the, it does rob, especially for a young girl that's been sexually abused, maybe by her father, just that who our Heavenly Father is. Yes. And, and Jesus yeah. even, I mean, when he taught the disciples how to pray, he said, our father in heaven. And when he cried out, it's like Abba, which means mm -hmm. daddy. I mean, we think of God not taking away the holiness and the grandeur and the power of who God is, the creator of the universe, mm -hmm. but he is our father, um, how he's known. And, and so it just, that, that's, a, that's a struggle. And it's, it's something that through prayer and just coming and being raw again mm -hmm. with God and saying, mm -hmm. God, I want to know it. you as my Abba. I want to know you because yes. maybe your earthly father, maybe not sexual abuse, but maybe just letting you down or neglect or whatever it may be, right. just praying out to God and saying, show me who you are, that yes. I am your Amen. son and That's I am good. your daughter. That's... I have been adopted into your family That's right. and show me your love. Yes. Let's change the subject one more time. And I certainly hope we have enough time to deal with this. <laughs> that is the issue of tithing. <laughs> <laughs> do you do it or don't one? you do it? And if you do it, do you do it on the gross or do you do it on the net? <laughs> and is it 10%? Where did this 10% figure come from in the first <laughs> place? And all of that we hear. Gentlemen, what, what do you have to say about tithing? Is that a part of God's economy? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, you These know, are I, easy questions. I, I grew up. I, I grew up in a church, and, and I, I remember hearing my pastor say, "It was the one place God told you that you could put Him to the test." Yeah. He said, "Prove me now here with the Lord, and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven, pour out blessing that you don't yeah. have room enough to to receive it." In Malachi chapter three, right. um, and I heard that all my life. And then you know, nowadays you hear a lot of people talk about how it's not New Testament. Well, Hebrews seven verse eight says, "And here men that die receive tithes." Mm -hmm. But there he receives them, mm -hmm. where it's a witness that he is alive forevermore. Those are the kind of things I think when we when we bring our tithe, we, we get caught up on the 90-10 principle. I know that was part of the question, how much is a tithe? Well, the, the word tithe literally means I mean, tenth. tenth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so, um, you know, that, that part, but in Malachi, he said we've robbed him in the tithes and the offerings. And offerings are above and beyond that. Um, and, and offerings, and you that can means give you haven't really given to God offering. until you've gone beyond the 10%. Yeah. Right? But see, this is where I think a lot of people muddy the water a little bit. We always want to look at it as a 90 10 principle. Um, and I, I, I've told people from the time I was young, I, I started preaching when I was 16, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I told people from the time I was young, it's, it's not. It's a 100% relationship, commitment, covenant with God. And so what you do is if, if, I, give, if I honor God with 100% of what he said is his, then he blesses what he said was 100% of what's mine. And so if I'm faithful in the covenant, then he blesses me. Mm. And that's found throughout the scriptures. If I'm faithful in any covenant he creates with me, right. then I'm blessed. Okay. Somebody else? I'm just going to jump in quick here, okay. Bill. Um, it's interesting that the New Testament really only speaks of tithing once or twice. It's not mm -hmm. a big theme. And Jesus looked at the Pharisees and says, you, you guys are big on tithing. And the picture he gives us is you would have 10 little piles of spices and you make sure you take your one little pile so you can mm -hmm. be obedient to the law, <laughs> but you've missed the larger themes of grace and mercy, yes. right? Yeah. And this... so the Bible doesn't say a lot about tithing, but what it does say is the greater principle, which is generosity. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh -huh. everything in the New Testament speaks of generosity. And uh, without going into churches and backgrounds, um, I spent about two years preaching on the theme of generosity from all kinds of perspectives. Uh -huh. And it turned our church around really? financially in many, many other wow, ways. And, and my experience has been 
that when a person is generous with their resources, then God becomes a greater part of them and their church and whatever else is going on. And people that hold on to it like it's theirs, they lose. Mm -hmm. It's not like they lose money, but they lose the, the creativity of what the Holy God is yeah. going to do in their lives. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have story after story in our church of people just saying, hey, God, God spoke to my heart to buy somebody's lunch. I don't even know who they are. You know, stuff like that. And the stories that get told because sure. God is looking for churches and people he can pour himself through. And as he does, it just opens it up. Right. Anybody else? You, 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 well, we are, we're a church plant, so we're kind of small. And uh, as far as the resources and being able to, to give outside our body is difficult. And we decided in a board meeting that uh, somebody in our church was going on a mission trip. And so we decided as a board, we want to bless them. And yeah. they said, okay, everybody just think of a number. And, and then everybody said 500. So I said, okay, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's be faithful and do it. And we gave this person to go on their trip $500. And three days later, I was going to um, our mother church for a Wednesday night service. And uh, a guy walked up to me and said, I want to talk to you. And I said, okay. And we went in the other room and he said, God told me to give this to you. And he gave me $5,000. Mm. And wow. we look back and say, and he, he told us, he said, I see your church as a giving church. And I'm looking at my church like, uh, we don't have a lot of people there. <laughs> you know, what are we going to, how are we going to do this? And, uh, but God just spoke to us and said, we're going to do this that's size what, or not. That's yeah. the way to do and, it. And uh, when we right. did, we took out that step, then God blessed us. And, yeah. and uh, it's not a magic serum or, you know, it's not something that you just pretend like you give money and God will do this. It, it was a matter of our hearts. And right. in our hearts, yep. we decided we want to be a church that is generous and giving. That's good. That's so and, good. Um, yeah. 2 uh, Corinthians 9, 7 says, Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, mm -hmm. not reluctantly yep. or under compulsion That's like right. you have to, cheerful. for God loves a cheerful giver. Yep. And I tell you what, that blessed us by being able to help this person go on that trip. Yep. And then, I mean, the, the, the bonus later was pretty awesome, but That's just... Awesome. just becoming a, a giving church, no matter what the size. Mm -hmm. well, what yeah. Pastor Ray is saying here, mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways, and we've experienced it, he's, we work together very closely, is that God, in the area of finances, invites us into an adventure, Yeah. yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the people who sit on the sidelines and hoard it and hang on to it, they're missing the adventure. Right. And that's what God wants for us all. Excellent. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much. And I'll just sum it up by saying, in the world's economy, it is based on buying and selling. In God's economy, it is based on sowing and reaping. It is, yeah. that's so, God, so good. Yeah. God honors both of those. He does, right. But God's Absolutely. economy Absolutely. is superior. That's right. And you've got the evidence, gentlemen. We thank you for it. Thank you for being with us, our audience today. And uh, we certainly hope you will be with us again next week. In the meantime, think of questions you would like to have us ask our panel of ministers and send those in so that we can have them by the time of the next program. That's it for today. I am Bill Harris of Life Questions, and we certainly look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show, and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>